After our three-day Nile cruise, we finally made it to another can't-miss stop in Egypt, Luxor, with its incredible sights and temples. While we had a great day overall, there's definitely a few things to be aware of before visiting. But let's start from the beginning. Good morning, another early wake-up call, 6.30 a.m. We checked out of our Nile River cruise to explore Luxor for this entire day. I'm Shaima, your tour guide for today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Luxor has 20% of the monuments in the whole world and 60% of the monuments in Egypt. It's here. Here was the golden age of Egypt. So she wants us to try... The Egyptian falafel, which okay. is the best falafel ever. Yes, oh, please. Thank you. You are welcome. Oh. It's much yeah. better than what we had at the hotel. Really? Yeah. The falafel is so soft and tender. We are starting right here in the Valley of the Kings. This is where 64 Egyptian pharaohs have been buried, including the famous King Tut. So we are gonna see three of the tombs included in the main ticket price, and then it was 100 Egyptian pounds extra to see the tomb of Ramses V and the sixth. Definitely something to keep in mind when you're coming here. Bring your cash, they do not accept credit card. And if you wanna bring a camera, just like this one, you're gonna have to pay 300 Egyptian pounds extra. But again, that's all worthwhile to have you guys along with us for the journey. So let's go see the Valley of the Kings. Can't wait. Unfortunately, we cannot bring our microphone with us for the camera. So bear with us. Apologies for the audio inside, but we're so excited to check it out right now. Let's go. The details and the colors in the king's tombs are incredible to see. And in order to preserve them, they actually rotate the three main tombs, which are open to the public. Also, while it would have been awesome to see King Tut's tomb, unfortunately a lot of stuff was stolen from it. Since it cost extra money to get into, Shaima told us it was better to check out Ramsey V's tomb instead. We were told by our guide that this is the best one, so this is going to be the fourth tomb that we'll be visiting today, and we're excited about it. That's so big. And then what is in that again? The coffin. The coffin. So unfortunately, it continued at every single tomb. There was a security guard, basically some guy standing outside looking for a tip. Even though you have a guide, your guide can come in with you into the king's tombs, basically to keep these people in place. I understand and respect that in these times, it's really difficult for a lot of people. It is something that if you don't come here with a guide, it makes a lot of sense because these people are knowledgeable about the place. But since we had a guide, it just started to get a little frustrating. They tried us to stop us from filming, but Valley of the Kings is still really, really beautiful and you should definitely check it out. So we are done with the tombs and we are going to head over where, Shaima? Yes. Where are we going next? We are going to the Queen Temple, Queen Hatshepsut. Lovely morning, nice to meet you. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum as -salam. Marhaba. Marhaba, hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Good morning. I love tourists. So the tour buses have definitely started to arrive here at the Valley of the Kings, so it pays to be the early bird here because it gets super tight into those tombs. You don't want to be here with tour groups. And now we are in a workman village and we can see the last generations from ancient Egyptian. Oh, what they are so doing, cool. they bring the stone from the mountains. Egypt is so rich with the stones. We've got different stones, basalt, granite, and the most famous stone is the alabaster. This is the form going to be a vase. Can it's going to be a vase, okay. Yeah. Oh, Heavy. 10 kilograms. I'm strong. And the compass. Look at that. It's like so light. <laughs> We're going to ride Tough Tough again. Yep, at each place they have a nice little uh, miniature train, I guess you could say, to take you from the entrance all the way into the location. We're at the Queen Headship Suit Temple. She's actually original Cleopatra, and she had a very important ruling power in the history. Ah, thank you. Ah, thank you. So these tour buses keep following us and we keep beating them thankfully to all these sites. 
We have it mostly to ourselves and then the tour buses show up as we're leaving. It's perfect timing so far. Thanks to Shema and Egypt Gift Tours. So that's definitely a good thing about having your own guide and getting out early. What is the most frequently consumed animal? Buffalo for sure, the sheep and goats, they eat camels. Yes, we do. The best meat ever. You know why? Why? Camels never get sick. If he gets sick, he dies. We beat the crowds. Yalla. Yalla. Welcome to Karnak Temple here in Luxor, Egypt. It is the second biggest temple in the entire world, as well as the oldest temple, second biggest after Angkor Wat in Cambodia. And it is dedicated to the god Amun-Ra. And actually right behind me, a little bit further up on this wall, you can see the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, giving a sacrifice to Amun-Ra in the form of food. And in exchange, Amun-Ra is giving and gifting to the ancient Egyptians tools in order to help them build society. We're standing right here in the courtyard during festival time. This is the only place that commoners like us could actually go and ever see the temple. Otherwise, further in, just for high priest and the king. So it's pretty incredible just how massive these structures are. How do they get them up like this? Who knows? I mean, they've stood the test of 4,000 years, but even this kind of little guy right behind me is like much taller than I am. So it's really fun to look at and just how incredibly dwarfed we are. Uh, even I'm short, just like Gokshe now. So this is probably one of the most famous parts of Karnak Temple. These massive columns right behind me, there is 134 of them and they are 24 meters tall. They are the biggest columns in the entire world. Can you believe that? I can't hug them. They're like super <laughs> I can't hug them. <laughs> Seen the whole artwork on it, the design, and how much work went into it to carve them into the shapes of that, like, incredible. I'm so happy that we made it here. So we finished up at Karnak Temple and decided to make a quick stop and pick up our very own custom-made papyrus paper. Which one is it? Steve. Steve? Okay. But last up, it was time to finish our day visiting the East Bank's most important site, Luxor Temple. So unfortunately, the ancient Sphinx Road behind us is actually under construction right now. Normally, you can go from Karnak Temple straight here to Luxor Temple right behind us. They built a mosque right on top of the temple. Because they didn't realize there was a temple here. Because it was buried. This entire area was actually under the sand. In fact, the sand was going up to the shoulders of the statues. There were actually houses on top of this area. Can you believe that? But they moved the houses and they dig the area and here it is. So one of the really interesting things about Luxor Temple is the fact that it's also a monastery. So there was a mosque built on top of it when it was buried, but during Roman times, they actually extended it and built a monastery here. And Alexander the Great actually came here himself as well and added on his own part. So there's a lot of history from a lot of different empires right here in Luxor Temple. It's pretty awesome. That's L and that's K, that's F, N, D E R S. That's Alexander. Oh. Tired. So what a long day exploring Luxor. Thank They're you old. so much. So, so you will go to Nefertiti and uh -huh. then go to the roof in Nefertiti Hotel. Yeah. Okay. The yes. best view ever, the best food ever. It was exhausting to see it all in one day. I would probably recommend breaking Luxor up to two days and seeing the sites in the early morning in the West Bank and then the East Bank. The West Bank being the side of the dead because that is where the sun set, the East Bank being the side of the living because that is where it rises. Ancient Egyptian mythology in a nutshell for you. And we are now at the Nefertiri Hotel on the Nile River overlooking it on its rooftop. I'm just gonna link that in the description below for you. Everything looks so good. So excited. We actually tried Camel Burger in Dubai. So this is gonna be our second time. I'm curious if it's gonna taste the same. It's super delicious. Like the, the, the meat tastes just so good. We are gonna end up our day here in Luxor and we are going to rest up a little bit before we have another adventure coming on later this evening. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. See you in a little bit. 
feel like I'm in a movie. It just feels so unreal being here. Very spacious. Do you can do this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs>